So in this video, I want to give you an introduction to immunology. I want to talk about the different components of the immune system, the innate and the adaptive immune system. I'm going to give you a timeline, what's going to happen after an exposure to a pathogen. And then I will conclude with an introduction on the geography of the immune system. Where do things happen? So let's just talk generally about what is immunology all about. So if I would need to summarize the immune system in one sentence, I would say it's all about killing the pathogen without harming the host. So the immune system is a collection of cells, tissues and molecules that all act together with this one goal, kill the pathogen. We are constantly threatened by pathogens through the air, through the gastrointestinal tract, and they constantly try to invade us. But we have an immune system that tries to destroy this pathogen, to protect us from this pathogen. Now, one very important concept is to understand that the immune system acts as a team. It's not one cell that accomplishes here a specific good job. It's a collection of cells that act together with the overall goal of killing the pathogen. And that's why also immunology is so challenging. It's a team effort. It's not going to be very helpful to know what one single cell is doing. It's very important to know what this one single cell is contributing to the overall goal of killing the pathogen. So you can think about it like a baseball game. The whole goal is here a touchdown. And the game is not going to make any sense if the cameraman would only focus the whole game on a single player. And that's the same for the immune system. You need to always consider what is overall happening in the big goal of killing the pathogen. So it's also important to know that this needs to happen without harming ourselves. So there's always a danger when the immune system distracts the pathogen, that it could also overreact and destruct own tissue. Or we always have to be worried about that the immune response might recognize also self antigens and, and fight against self tissue. So therefore it needs to be elegantly designed in a way that it's not going to harm ourselves. So the immune system has two compartments. So one is the so-called innate immune system and the other is adaptive immune system. Let's start to talk about the innate immune system. So the innate immune system is called innate because it's a defense system that all animals just naturally seem to have. And it's our first line response. So this is a response that is supposed to be quick and dirty. Quick because it's just there, everybody has it. It's first line. But it's dirty, dirty in a way that it cannot tell us any specific. It can just tell, okay, generally there's something wrong here. It might be a bacteria that had invaded me or a fungi or a virus, but there's no specifics about that. It's absolutely necessary. And I'm going to get to that back in a minute, um, why it's absolutely necessary. And it doesn't remember anything. So when we're going to see the same invader, Five years later, the innate guys are going to do the same stuff. They're not going to be faster. Then we have the adaptive immune system. Adaptive because this system can adapt to protect us from anything. And these are the specialists. And as in real life, specialists always require time. They're not just ready to fight against something. They require time. They can remember stuff. So if you have a second pathogen exposure, they are going to be much faster. And those are also the guys that are potentially dangerous, that are mainly responsible if something goes wrong, that they might even harm ourselves. Let's just add in the cells that are going to show up that are the key players of the innate and the adaptive immune system. The key players of the innate immune system are macrophages, neutrophils, dendritic cells, and the NK cells, the natural killer cell. The adaptive key players are T and B cells. So what is happening 
when our body is invaded from a pathogen the very first time. So let's suppose we have a human that doesn't have an immune system. Well, th this individual is most likely to die. We don't have anything to fight against it. So if nothing happens, death would be the result. Normally, the innate immune system kicks in when we see a pathogen the first time. And this happens very fast because we learn it's the quick and dirty. They are already stationed everywhere. So wherever a pathogen gets in, it's going to be greeted by the innate immune system. It's there. And within min minutes and hours, it's going to react. So if it's a pretty minor infection, the innate immune system might be able to deal with that and can even clear the infection and everything is good again. If the infection is a little bit more severe, the innate immune system can get the experts. So, so it takes them approximately a week to get them activated, but then they are going to get the experts. The adaptive immune system is going to kick in. And then if the adaptive immune system works very well, it's going to clear the infection. But obviously still, if the adaptive immune system does not, does not work, it can still result in death. And this should explain now why the innate immune system is absolutely necessary. Because this diagram shows you that without innate immune system, you're not even getting an adaptive immune, immune response. So the innate immune system is absolutely required because it's a first line and it's the system that gets us the expert to help clear the infection. So the last thing that I want to discuss in this video is about the geography of the immune system. Where do all these things happen? So the first question is, where are the immune cells made? And all the immune cells, the adaptive and the innate immune cells, are made in the bone marrow. So the cells of the adaptive immune system, the T and B cells, they require, in contrast to the innate immune cells, some additional training, some additional education. And this happens for the B cells in the bone marrow, B for bone marrow, and for the T cells in the thymus, T for thymus. So we call these tissue, the bone marrow and the thymus, the so-called primary lymphoid tissues. These are the places where immune cells get made and educated. Further, we have already learned that the cells of the adaptive immune system, the T and B cells, are not immediately ready to fight against an infection. So they require some activation process. These are the specialists, so they require some time. So these activation processes of the cells of the adaptive immune system happen in the so-called secondary lymphoid tissues, which is the spleen, lymph node, and the malt, the mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, which you can find beneath mucosal surfaces in the body. So these are the sites of the adaptive responses because this is the place where these experts, the T and B cells, can become from a naive cell that just got made and trained now to a really a factor cell that can do some stuff and can help clear the infection. So if you want to understand the immune system, we have to have a very clear understanding of where in the body all this interaction takes place. And there are going to be three phases. First of all, there is this side where a pathogen invaded us. And I'm just going to use as an example that we hit a nail in our big toe and introduced some bacteria into our deeper tissue. So what we have learned is that any pathogen that invades us is going to be greeted by the innate immune system. The cells of the innate immune system are stationed at strategic points where microbial invasion or accumulation of foreign peptides likely occur. So these cells are scattered throughout the body. And you're going to find them in the big toe where we just introduced some bacteria. So if the innate immune system cannot take care of the invader, they need to go to the nearby lymph node, try to find and activate the expert, generate the weapons of the adaptive immune system, and then these weapons 
need to be brought back to the site of infection to help clear the infection. So this concludes the video on the introduction to immunology.